My name is Daniel Branham. I'm a director of photography out of Melbourne, Florida, and this is video number one for me documenting the work I do in the video production field. Okay, so this is everything I'm bringing to Miami. We've got a shoot, a two day shoot with an old client from Detroit, Detroit Public Television. And so starting out over here, we've got the Canon XF605 batteries and everything. I'll need to run that camera. I like a hard case on set just so I can put it in there when we're not shooting and I just feel that it's protected. Here I've got my personal items, clothing and whatnots. Uh, over here we've got some lighting. I've got the Amram tube light, some small rig COB lights, uh, two 120s and a 220. Second camera is the Canon R5C and um, we're gonna set that up for second angle. I'm, I have a grip on set so hopefully he can just monitor that camera while it's running. Then here I've got all the battery chargers and just odds and ends, CF cards and SD cards. And here we've got extension cords, uh, reflector, and just some AC adapters and what have you. Two tripods, my Venton and my Manfrotto. Then we've got some on light uh, modifiers here. So we've got two of the smaller small rig light modifiers and one big one. A little cart to help us get around. And then in the truck already, I've got a couple C stands and some other tripods. I keep saying tripods, I mean light stands. So a couple C stands and I don't know, three or four different light stands. And that's hopefully everything we're gonna need. So I've been working in production for over 25 years now. And the one thing that never seems to change about this job is the loading in and loading out of gear. And at this point in my career, I really try to stay in shape because this stuff will just wear you out if you're not in shape. So that's one thing I can recommend is as you continue your career, just try to stay in shape because this part will wear you out. All right, well, we got most of it in the truck already. Um, lighting back here, grip. I'm gonna put the cameras in the cab with me. Some of the lighting stuff could probably stay in the truck overnight, but uh, all the cameras and anything that's really expensive will come in the hotel with me. But, uh, well, there we go. All right, well, we're heading out. We got about a three hour drive to Miami, and then uh, we'll go to the site inspection at the Freedom Tower. Then we're gonna go do a site inspection at uh, Versailles, the Cuban restaurant on 8th Street. And then after that, we'll get checked in and hopefully uh, wrap for the night. That's interesting, that's uh, con cargo containers. It's In our experience, it usually will have that. Exactly. Where does that come from? I mean, this is interesting. I mean, we can, it's, we've got a grip, so we can, the moving isn't a problem. If you, we want to do a couple and then you want to move it, I'd say with what I have, moving would be maybe 15 minutes between locations, 15, 20 to get it set and go. Or more like the racks. Yeah, so if you want to, if you know, if you had something you want to sit down and kind of lock in, moving is easy. I can, I've got some portable lighting too. That whenever I have the opportunity to do a site inspection, I always try to do it because you're solving so many problems that you're going to have to deal with the next day. So, you know, if I'm trying to figure out where am I going to put the lights, where am I going to put the camera, how many different positions, how long is it going to take to move between setups, I like thinking about all of that the night before so that I'm not dealing with everything at the same time the day of the shoot and I know it makes the client feel good when you can give your input and they can tell you what they want and so that dance can happen the day before rather than on set when time is just burning 
Anyways, uh, I always suggest if you have the opportunity to see the set and do a site inspection, go ahead and do that. That makes a lot of sense. Well, here's my Holiday Inn Express room in Miami. Not too bad. Luckily, we got on the 10th floor, which is the top floor here. And then we've got Bayside right across the street. The big wheel, the port of Miami downtown that way so we're gonna just walk down a few blocks to the freedom tower and get this party started got the two cameras here and in my little run bag over there this was the first setup of the day it's a two-person interview here I have some of the crew sitting in just so I could dial in the cameras. Um, I usually like to do that to see real people in the shots. And then here's actually the talent that we used for the show. I got uh, two side lights, kind of back side fills. And then I have one key, which is the China ball. And um, it's just really soft lighting. I try to go super soft, especially on older people. Uh, the tricky part about this setup was I didn't have another camera op, so I was doing both cameras at the same time. I'd have to walk between one camera and the second camera, which was fine um, because they're pretty much locked down shots. But uh, good thing I had an audio guy there. That's Dan, the audio man. He uh, saved my life because originally we didn't have an audio guy for this job, and it just would have almost been impossible for me to do everything that I had to do plus audio. So here's the shot of the host, a tight shot. And then uh, the other shot here is with the guest. And every now and again, I would open up to a two shot so that the editor will have that. And there's the China ball. And of course, uh, they were boomed and loft. So yeah, it worked out pretty good for, for the first setup. This was our second setup of the day. It was an exterior in front of the Freedom Tower, actually right along Biscayne Boulevard. And that's where it became pretty hard for the audio guy, Dan. He uh, had a difficult time getting clean audio and we'd have to wait for buses and cars and motorcycles to go by. So it was a little bit challenging. We brought on a teleprompter at this point to help the host with the script, which just made things go faster. And we tried to get through this location as quickly as we could. So we ended up doing multiple stand-ups around the, the location here. And then for the last setup of the day, we picked this one corner where we can look at the staircase. And it was just a simple on-camera close and open. And so I just went with the Chinese lantern because we had a lot of available light. And uh, of course we had the teleprompter going and there's a teleprompter operator. And it just makes the host's job so much easier to be able to read script direct to camera. Uh, and then over here, we've got Dan with his little audio village set up. And uh, the other gentleman there is Kevin. He was a grip on this shoot, and he was excellent. He, Before I could even ask him to move things, he had already moved them and knew a lot about lighting. And we just, both of us, kind of figured out things as we went. And then there's the setup. It's a daylight, small rig, RC220. It's a pretty good light. You know, it's not that expensive if you're trying to get into lighting. I think I paid, you know, maybe 250 for that, and then you get the Chinese lantern, and uh, you're good to go for some decent soft lighting. This is just a close-up too. Uh, yeah, I think we got it. Yeah, uh, I think we got it. Okay. All right, I think we're good. That's all right. Cut. 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 Day one down, here's all the gear, back in the car. Good morning, sunrise in Miami, about 5.30 a.m. Uh, today's the last day in Miami, but um, 
we got to get over to the restaurant early to set up before the crowd gets there. Anyways, this is the Port of Miami. That's a cruise ship coming in. And uh, over there is the Miami Arena. But anyways, i got to pack up my stuff, get all the gear back to the car, and then uh, make my way over to the Versailles restaurant. Oh yes, the most important thing in the morning, a little bit of coffee, even if it's hotel coffee, better than no coffee. So this is our second day location, Versailles Restaurant in Miami, off 8th Street, near Little Havana. And uh, the trick with this location was, it's a restaurant, they have customers for breakfast and lunch, so we needed to get there early enough to get loaded in, so they didn't cause too much of a disruption. Um, so we opted to go for a room in the back, so we figured we'd be out of the way the most. And uh, the other issue with this is that you can probably start to see is there's mirrors everywhere. So everywhere you'd point the camera, you could see the camera. So um, as we're walking through here, you'll see this little corner actually worked out pretty good for us. And um, so I thought the best thing to do would be to shoot into that corner in the back and then have everybody else situated around the set. So here's Dan, the audio guy, setting up for his day. And if you have the opportunity to use an audio guy, say if the client asks, do you want one? Or if you think that you need one, always push for that because it can get real tricky if you're trying to do camera and lighting plus audio, you almost, you're trying to cover too many bases. So on this particular morning, it was wonderful we had an audio guy because we had four guests and the host. And that just for me as, as the DP of the day, there's no way I could handle all of that. So the tricky part about this for me was we had to get everybody around this one table here and of course I had mirrors in the background to deal with and to get enough coverage so that I can cross shoot and get the host, get the main guest and the other three and also operate both cameras because again I didn't have another camera op, I was doing both of these cameras myself. So I just opted to cross shoot and then once in a while I would slide around and get multiples or singles depending on which angle I was shooting just so the editor would have enough to to cover himself in the post and then here we have the makeup department and then the producer in the back over there that's the host but um, yeah it actually worked out good and just to make lighting simple I just floated in the Chinese lantern over the table there was so much bouncing light with all the mirrors everybody was pretty well lit and uh, and even so for the difficulty of this location, it actually turned out pretty good. This is the famous Dan, audio Dan, <laughs> and the camera Dan. Yeah, we have a lot of Dan's on set today. So we're gonna go back to manual and I gotta switch in the menu to uh, XLR. So. Can I blow it in here? Yeah, go ahead. So at this point, we had everybody who was gonna be on camera sitting down in their position. And one pro tip I have is try to make sure you have just about all of your work done before talent sits down. And if there's an opportunity such as I had right here where they're just talking about what they're gonna speak about, to dial in the little tiny things that you wanna get right, that's your time. That's your time to go in there and tweak this, maybe move lighting a little bit, uh, move angles, but uh, you don't want your talent waiting on you. So always be ready way before you're actually about to start. All right, the last thing I'll talk about here, and it's probably obvious at this point, is I'm a Canon guy. I've been a Canon guy the last 10 years. Before that, I was a Sony guy. I don't have a real preference. It's just that at this point, I'm so invested in my Canon lenses 
and the operating system that I'm comfortable with Canon and most of my clients are happy with what I give them. But I understand, you know, some people like Sony, some people like Canon and it's always changing. I, it goes round and round and I've been around long enough to know that. But uh, just find the system that works for you and if your clients are happy with that, then that's the system you should work with. The bottom line is, it's the quality of your work that's going to show through and not the gear that you use. That's all I have to say about that. Driving around getting B-roll. We got Mr. Okay. Kevin here, Chauffeur Captain Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. You got Big D back there mixing audio. <laughs> Talk to my agent. Talk to my agent. <laughs> this is all inspired by David Moorfield. I'm my course. agent. Shout out to David, who's amazing, and uh, he got us connected for this. Definitely. And David said we have to make vlogs, so and we do have to make vlogs. So under his instructions, we're making vlogs. <laughs> So the rest of this shoot day was spent getting B-roll on 8th Street and then we got some MOS's at a local college. But uh, what I really want to talk about here is um, some guys that got me inspired to do this vlog. So David Moorfield, who I met in Orlando, uh, he pushed me to do this. And of course the cranky cameraman, who I've been watching pretty much for the last couple years. And Peter Mokri, which uh, he's out of Dallas, which I really like his work as well. So these guys have been I think really leading the charge in this space and you know why not jump in I think it can't do anything but help my exposure in this field even though I've been around a long time you know I can always learn new tricks and so anyways here's some pictures of the, the man on the street stuff we did and here's Dan the audio man from Loyal Sound and he was wonderful and here's Kevin Andarza he was my grip excellent guy and this is a group shot of everybody in the crew so that's my first vlog guys um, Hopefully you like it and subscribe and give it a like.